Monday warrior, mean, mean stride. Today's Tom Sawyer, mean, mean pride. All right, welcome back to the madness here at the Model Works, everybody. We have another completed build that I sort of got forgotten about and sort of got put up and then sort of gotten forgotten about uh, together, I guess, if, if you will. Give you a little backstory on this real quickly. And this video will probably run just a little bit long. I'm, I'm going to uh, give you the reveal here at the at the bench and then we'll do a slideshow at the end because I want to talk about the car a little bit. Back in 2018, I participated in a group build that was uh, put on, hosted by Dylan at, uh, I believe, New York State Modeling. I believe that's his channel name. And it was a, uh, I think, if, if not the first, Bill that he did, the first group build for the Pro Street deal. It was shortly there, maybe the second one, I'm not sure. But anyway, I think it was the first one. Uh, it was just called the Pro Street Bill, and I think since then he has titled it the Pro Street Gasser or whatever. But anyway, at that time it was just called the Pro Street Bill, and I, I got in on it, and I actually did a couple of videos on it. I did a video of painting using auto air uh, colors with the Candy 2.0. I think I did a couple of videos on it actually, the paint process. And that was in September of 2018 and my, uh, at work, a pretty close friend of mine I had been knowing for the better part of 25 years or so uh, Thanksgiving weekend of that year, he passed away very unexpectedly, uh, had not been having any uh, health issues at all. He was borderline diabetic, but he had he, he passed away from a heart attack, a sudden heart attack. He actually uh, collapsed in, in, at his girlfriend's house, and she got him, they got him to the hospital, and he uh, passed away at the hospital. But at any rate, that kind of took all the wind out of my sails. I just didn't, man, I just didn't feel like building for a while, so I just, you know, I packed it up, and I put it up, and, um, and then after that was my endeavor into getting back into competition shooting, and then the pandemic, and it just steamrolled from there, but at any rate, I had forgotten about it until we got up here. This is actually one of the, I say up here, northeast of where I used to live in, uh, I used to live in Nashville, as you know, Nashville proper in Davidson County, which is the county that Nashville is located in, and we moved up to the northwest about 40 miles, 35 miles or so. And so when we got up here, I unboxed and a lot of stuff that I had forgotten about or had thought I had lost got um, uncovered and, and discovered and rediscovered so to speak and as you know with the comment I just did the the video on um, the Dino Don comment and then um, you know this was one I had forgotten completely about as well now I had this one was quite a, not quite as far along as the comment was but the paint was done and, and the car was cleared and the interior was done but I had not done uh, some of the suspension work and who, what, where on it. So, uh, without further ado, let's take a look at it. This I, actually is the 74 Torino GT, as you see. And that was my choice because I had not seen anyone on here, anyway, at least, do a Pro Street setup on a Torino, at least not the GT. I think I saw one using the uh, the Torino, like in the uh, the Clint Eastwood movie. I can't recall the name right off the top of my head, but at any rate, uh, and maybe the Starsky and Hutch uh, Torino as well. 
and so I thought it would be kind of cool. So it, without further ado, let's take a look at what we've got. And here she is, and we'll try to get her over here a little closer, and we'll zoom in just a little bit. All right, uh, and that's it. It is, uh, let's talk about the paint just uh, real quickly. It is the Auto Air Carib Blue Candy 2.0 mixed with Wicked Blue Pearl, and it's uncanny how close it came out to being the same color as the Jungle Gym Vega, and uh, no paint between the two are the same. So the only thing that's similar between them are the clear, is the clear coat, which is the tester's um, gloss enamel cut with lacquer thinner. Uh, this is back half using the 66 AMT Nova. And uh, the back half was, with the wheel tubs, was grafted onto the existing chassis of the Torino. And the and everything fit together pretty well as far as interior. It fit right in. The package tray of the Torino went right over the top of the wheel tubs, and I didn't have to do any modif modification. I did have to trim up the back half, the back part of the back half of the wheel tubs to get it to fit underneath the Torino. But the Torino is a wide-body car, so I didn't have to trim side to side at all. And so we went with the blue, and we cut uh, we cut the opening in the in the hood to allow for the aftermarket uh, stuff that we put on it, and we'll get to that in just a minute. So I wanted I went with the flat black hood and chin spoiler, which you'll see in the close ups on it, uh, flat black side mirrors. Uh, this came with a photo etch kit. Now, I did not, let me get my little pointer here. I did not use uh, the side uh, the side piece that, that goes right across here. I just thought the car looked cleaner without it. Uh, I did put the uh, Torino badge on the back, same on the other side. And it, there was a GT lettering that goes right above this vent and I actually in cutting one of the letters off I shot it into the air and it's disappeared into the floor into the as they say the carpet monster which is this indoor outdoor carpet in here but it still ate it anyway so I used the photo etch on the uh, oop, a little too close there I used the photo etch on the rear tail cover off the lights there you see the rear tail panel and I'll take the knock the hood up there a little bit let's get it over here closer again and we'll take a look at the engine if we can get it off without too much trouble uh, this is the kit engine oops this is the kit engine uh, block and head and valve covers with a aftermarket resin tunnel ram and carbs and velocity stacks. Uh, and I'm not sure where all that come from, just different places. I think B&L resins, uh, maybe the carbs, I'm not sure right off the top of my head. We have an aftermarket, uh, now I do know that the electric fan is from B&L resins up front there. And we modified the radiator shroud to accommodate that. Uh, the radiator hose is uh, bead lacing rubber tubing with some very small wire for the insert to allow the hose to be bent and hold its shape. Crimp tubing for the uh, connections at the radiator and on top of the block there. All of the engine paints are uh, AK Extreme Metal, different tones of metal from 
uh, matte aluminum to, I don't know, just different ones. Uh, several different tones were used. I actually used their chrome. I thought that a, uh, oh, you can get back in frame there. There we go. I actually used a their chrome extreme metal for the brake booster, and I didn't put, I wanted to keep the engine clean, the engine bay clean, so I did not, uh, you know, I just did not feel uh, running fuel lines up to the carb since this engine sits so way up, you know, it, it was going to be difficult to get it to go down over the hood or get it, get the hood to go down over all that. So I thought it just looks clean, you know, without it. Um, and I've, I've done, I've started doing that more and more, leaving that off. Um, it's, it's still, it, it's just so difficult to, to get it to look right. Now I could jab it in there and make it, and it would look ridiculous, you know, and I just, I don't want to do that. I just prefer to, um, I, I'd rather have it clean and, and, you know, not have the detail. And I had looked like it was just put in there and half-assed done and it's all jammed together and it's not to scale. And, my, you know, my eyes are, you guys who are in your 50s, you know that your eyes are not like they were when you were 30, so you can't do the things that you used to. But at any rate, uh, the wheels and tire package, if you've been doing any modeling at all, you'll recognize those come from the ANT 66 Pro Street Nova as well. And all the holes uh, cut out, drilled out uh, in the rims there. Now let's... Let's go underneath and we'll take a look. Now, I, it also, uh, we also borrowed some uh, mufflers and some of the pieces from, I believe this come from one of the Challenger, the Reveal Challenger kit. And I actually just uh, made my own exhaust pipes coming out of the headers and fabricated that. Myself, the rear end is also from the Nova kit. The coilovers, all that's from. Uh, as you can see, it just chunks up in there just perfectly. It's you know the width is just perfect, and uh, so it really turned out nice. And it's got the uh, the stance on it. And I did modify the front end a little to accommodate that. And I had to, I made my own uh, wheel spent my own spindles, and. Uh, so the car would be lower. It was by nature the kit and the car itself in in real life sits kind of nose high, and so we took that out, and so it would have that forward rake to it that uh, we like our our uh, cars to have. And I like the the Pro Street stances are really nice. Um, I'm not a huge huge Pro Street fan, but I think when they're done right, uh, they really do. They really do uh, lend something to a kit. Um, there's the front end. We, of course, we did the did our black blackouts of the uh, the holes there in the grill work, and we did the uh, photo etch badging on the grill there itself. We have a flat black chin spoiler. It's hard to see sitting on that, but we'll get some pictures of it. And we turned the, as you know, as you saw, we turned the exhaust and put the, uh, ran it out the side there. And I cut aluminum tubing for the exhaust tips. Used the 429 badging and we just, uh, on the side there. And we used uh, a little bit of, uh, a little clear red to kind of accentuate the 429. There, which is what this is supposed to be. This is not the four, not the Cobra Jet, but the 429. Uh, yes, it is the Cobra Jet, not the Boss 429. So, and that's pretty much it. All right. Hope you guys enjoy it, Dylan. I am so sorry for the three-year delay in getting this project completed, but. Uh, I hope you like it, and I hope you guys have enjoyed taking a look at it, and I'll stick a little short uh, slideshow with my garage diorama at the end, and so we'll move on now and try to get 
old jungle gym going as well. All right, sorry for the length of this video, but I wanted to give you a little description of everything, and I uh, uh, hope you hope you liked what you saw. All right, till I talk to you again, take care of one another. Don't take any crap from anyone. See you soon.